Look, oh my gosh, it looks so good on camera. <gasps> Boom, it's the trail. I almost dropped it. Oh my gosh. Lord have mercy, he almost dropped it. Okay. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if you're new here, my name's Koa and this is Koa's Plant Corner here on YouTube, obviously, because it's a YouTube channel. I had to stop saying that. Okay, so today I will be continuing my Koa's Plant Care Guide series. Boom, I almost forgot to do the whole <laughs> the hand motion. I love this plant a lot, so much so that I have multiples around my room. And I have, I think I have two in my house. I have one eight inch pot in my um my mother's office and I also have one oh in this north facing window it's like I'm testing it out see how it does but it's in there as well but let me just let me just show it to you I also have like one two three in here three in my room so let me show you the one plant I'm going to show you today if you follow me here on YouTube or if you follow me on Instagram and I'll put my Instagram tag somewhere I can't really point I'll put it I'll put it down here um you know that I have this plant you know where it's situated at but let me just show you where she's at now this is a philodendron micans so um, this is it right now. I'll talk about the situations in right now and how it seems to be floating. But before we begin, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel here. I do post a lot of plant care guides. So if you're interested in a plant, if you have a question about a plant, you know, if you have a plant that struggling, feel free to comment down below the plant. And if I have that plant and if it's doing well in my care, I'll definitely be posting a plant care guide on it. If it's not doing well in my care, then I'll try to help where I can, but please like be aware or know that I'm not a plant expert. I'm just a plant hobbyist, like many other people out there. Um, I'm definitely not like a, what do you call it? Botanist or whatever. Is that flowers? Ugh. I'm definitely not like an expert on it. So I'll give you my opinion based on my experience of having that plant. Okay, so if you're new here or you maybe aren't new here, you already know, I'm gonna talk about four different categories that I use to kind of sum up the care um, for the plants that I have. And I do find that they'll be pretty helpful for you as well. So the first category I'm gonna talk about is the lighting. So I'll talk about the lighting that this plant, this field engine micans that it's in. I also will be covering um, maybe the conditions that I have the other ones in. And maybe if I'm not lazy, I'll just bring it down and show you uh, where they're at. And then next I'm gonna talk about watering. So watering, I normally do include the type of water that I use, one, and two, the nutrients that I add in the water. And then three, I'll talk about the pot that it's in. Um, if it's happy, how's it doing? And fourthly, I'll talk about the soil that I have in. So let's get into it. What is that? So let's get into it. <laughs> it's gotten pretty big. I don't, I didn't realize how heavy it was. I think it's more so the cover pot. So for lighting. So if you um, remember my room tour, I'll post the card over here. I know where it's at now. It's over there. Um, I have above my bed, I have a sh floating shelf. This field engine micans actually lives on that floating shelf and it's more so towards, if you're looking at the shelves on the left side of the shelf. Ooh, this will be right on your end. The left side of the shelf. So it's there. It's maybe five feet away from my southwestern window. So I'll just show you what it looks like one more time. So all the leaves are kind of facing the window. You kind of see here it's starting to trail a lot i actually did recently give it a, a like a trim or cutting uh, maybe like a two months ago and it's like trailing back again it's really fun so that's the light it's in right now i think it's it's probably the the most ideal for it at this moment i didn't i do notice that once you give um mike a little bit more light they do turn a little bit more burgundy or red which is super cool it's nice to look at if you want something different, but you can kind of see these, the new girls sometimes, they'll be a little bit on the redder side right there. But if you give it a little bit more light, at least in my experience, the leaves would be a little bit more red. So yeah, that's it for lighting. Okay, so let's, we'll talk about also next watering. So 
like for most of my plants i use either filtered water or i will use tap water but for this baby here i only use filtered water for it um i do also include some liquid dirt some super thrive at times i would use fish emulsion right now since it's november i'm not fertilizing um as much honestly it's partially because i'm lazy but also people don't advise you to fertilize during the seasons where it's not growing but this plant is still pushing out new growth it's still growing so i should be fertilizing it and or i should be fertilizing it more and lastly i do use myco powder so i'm going to be doing a video soon about how i use um these nutrients in my water and um and kind of go into it a little more explain as much as i can but that's what i currently use for the watering so we'll talk about next the pot it's in so at this time right now it's actually in a black uh what is this maybe a six, five inch pot so this is kind of what it is without the whole setup here so it's in a black five inch pot um and i have it in a cash bow pot here that i bought from my local nursery and then inside i have a small four inch pot kind of help prop it up it's it's not ideal but um it's the only pot that i have it that can um kind of <laughs> I don't know it kind of covers it and plus the leaves are growing really well so you don't see the back of it this is the back this is what the wall sees we have a trailing trailing section here the soil mixture i'll talk about it a little bit now i have it in um now let's move to soil sorry let me transition correctly moving into soil when it comes to soil i when i first got this plant i was reading or watching a lot of um youtube videos where people would talk about like having a chunkier soil mixture and how it's great for philodendrons which is true um i find that vining philodendrons don't really care i have vining philodendrons in general potting soil and it's just as fine but for this one i added a lot of orchid bark into it so it's um it's more of a super chunkier mixture so orchid bark it has some general potting soil it has some worm casting i think i did put some horticultural um charcoal um I do have horticultural charcoal in a lot of the plants that I really do not want to die, like the ones that I mm, that I really don't want to die. I'm just gonna say that. Um, I have some perlite, of course, LECA, because I find putting LECA in my soil mixture has been very great. It's been helping me to not overwater my plants. Um, it kind of adds a little bit more aeration and I find that sometimes roots will latch onto it. It's just really great. I really like, I really do like and suggest you to put LECA into your soil mixture. I have it in Hoyas, I have it in Monsteras. Every single plant here, you will find almost every single, because I did at, at a time when I first started, I didn't use LECA all the time, but um, almost every single plant in my room, you will see LECA in it. It's been really helpful for the root growth in my opinion, um, but yeah, so only recently I actually topped it off with some regular general potting soil with some um, perlite and a little bit more leca. I just kind of sprinkled it on top because I found that it was drying out way too fast. So I think that the chunky, chunky soil just um, wasn't holding on to the water as much as the plant would like, you know, to kind of hold on to the water. So it does have a lot more leaves. So I have been, um, I did sprinkle some more soil on top of it. But I think that's been helping to kind of maintain the, the water and the moisture in the plant. So I'm not watering it every three minutes. I felt like I was watering it once every week, week and a half. It was kind of getting out of hand. I'm like, what in the world? But um, now it's been really great. It could be also that the weather's changing. It's been cooler, you know, so it hasn't been drying out as much. So that's really been helpful um, for this plant. I'm just taking off some of the sheaths if you're not familiar. Uh, philodendrons, the difference between philodendron and pothos. One big one is the sheaths. You can kind of see it right here. It's like behind this leaf here. Right there. Insert arrow right here. Boing. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, right here. Um, but I'm just taking them off. Um, yeah, and that's it for soil. I think I could talk about a little bit the situation that's in, why it's taking on this abnormal shape. So right now I have um, it on a trellis actually. So I bought the trellis from Amazon. I'll link it down below. Um, I bought two or three of them. I bought two of them. One of the trellises is in my silver dollar vine plant. Uh, I think it's called Zero Citizen Danguii. I don't know. But I'll insert the plant care guide that I did on that on that video there. 
So I actually have that one trailing on one. Then I have, this is the second one. The, you can kind of see it needs to be um, pinned again to it, but I have it up um, trailing up this trail as well, trellis as well. I just thought it'd be fun, something different. I do really enjoy the height it kind of gives on that bookshelf. So I think it kind of evens out the plant um, in terms of the appearance of it. But yeah, I think it's kind of cute. It's fun, you know, doing this thing. Um, let me try to show you, oh, oh, I'm not gonna be lazy. I'm gonna be honest with you. This one definitely needs to be repotted very soon because um, it's like outgrowing its pot. It's then you can kind of see a little bit of it here. But this is the second one that I have. It's in a situation where it's in a pot here. It definitely needs to be repotted. You can just tell. You can see some roots at the bottom there as well. Has to be repotted for sure. Let me see if I can take off, hold on. Take off this pot to show you. Oh, nope, making a mess. I'm not doing that. Why would I say that? No. Nope. No, I'm not sleeping again. So I have it up this, like very badly. It's not even like pin all the way around. It's like moving around. It's really, it's, it's, I don't know why I have it in such a bad condition, but it's, um, I'm trying to get it to grow off the moss pole here. I'm gonna repot really it very soon, but you can kind of see it kind of outgrew the totem pole and started to grow, um, you know, over it, do its thing, whatever. But this one is right behind me on that shelf up there. Yeah, so it gets pretty adequate lighting. I think because it's root bound, it needs to be watered so often. So I've been watering it a lot more, but the soil is in, I have no idea because I bought it from the nursery and the pot is still in the same nursery pot. So that's it for that. The new one right now is acclimating and lower lighting. I do find that my things, they do prefer a little bit more brighter light. So medium to bright, I would not go to low light because I just, I just noticed even my sister, she had a Mikins and it was barely getting any light and it just kind of all the leaves fell off and it just turned into a long like propagation project. You know what I mean? So I just chopped it up and I have it propagating right now in my greenhouse. But um, yeah, they do need a little bit more brighter light. Like I feel like you're better off giving it brighter than less light. I've, I've had cuttings that's been given or that's had super bright light, like very bright light, and they just turn red. They're just pretty. In my care, I do find that brighter lights helps with it. I would not consider philodendron to be a low light friendly plant. In my opinion, IMO, in my opinion, it's not a low light plant. I would say that the conditions that it's in right now, it's more about medium in my room. So they're happy, they're doing great. Let me show you her one more time. <laughs> Let me show you her one more time. This is her Philodendron Mikens. Again, it's up, growing up a, or uh, along a, um, what do you call this? Trellis. And I have to pin or stake, pin this part down so that I can keep growing full. But this is her Philodendron Mikens. Honestly, one of my favorites. And it's a plant where if I see it for sale, I have a weird tendency to keep buying it. It's just, I just would love a room full of just mykins and I'd be a happy person. Yeah. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching this plant care guide. Feel free to check out my playlist here of my other plants that I've spoken about and how I care for them. Um, I do want to reiterate that the plants that I do mention in these videos are plants that are doing well, they're thriving, they're happy. And that's why I share or I feel comfortable to share my care with you guys, um, but also be cognizant that everyone's environment is different and the way I care for my plant is not set in stone how you should care for your plants as well. Feel free to experiment and test on plants. I do suggest to buy cheaper plants to test and experiment, see what works for you. It's more of like a trying game when it comes to plants because um, one plant will thrive in one situation and then won't thrive in the next. And um, it's kind of like a puzzle or a game. So feel free to test it out on your end, see what works for you. Comment down below the environment that you have your field engine mic in. I'm interested to know. Yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share this video with your friends and your family, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.